Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of How To Minecraft. Look at what I'm doing with the camera because the salt speed gives me extra speed and then it widens out the camera. It's like I got like camera angle. I got I got a cameraman on this episode. It's pretty awesome. How are y'all doing? I am super excited. We are still here at the Piglin Bartering Farm and it has been fantastic. Look at all this stuff that we have got. Some of y'all mentioned in the last episode like has Chad forgot that he has a gold farm and like what the heck? Uh, I have not forgotten. And I'm still super appreciative of it. I made it with Ray Works. Oh, that one has very little gold in it. Um, and I'm using that gold farm to get all of the gold here. Uh, it does have a bartering element to it. So basically, every once in a while, a piglin, uh, or zombified piglin, when it dies, will drop a gold bar. And there is a piglin inside of that farm. This is the farm, by the way. And I will trade a little bit, but I want to like trading all the time, every day, massive amounts, need all that obsidian. Um, so yes, it does work. There's that little piglin right there. And if I fall off the edge here, you can see, oh, that's the gold area. These are all the trades and I do have it sort of organized just a little bit. So it is pretty awesome. I'm, I've used it. I love it, but I want more of it. So that is why we made that piglin bartering farm. That is not the video today. Today I am going to be covering 10 of my most essential tips for those of us who play in survival Minecraft. Before we get started on today's video, hey, 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 hey you, do, do you, do you want to, you want to win a, a PlayStation 5? Okay, well listen up. Gen G and Toyota Sienna are looking for the best Minecraft builders in the US. They are hosting a build competition that starts today, March 26th. The competition closes on April 1st, and the theme is let's go places in your dream ride. So what awesome place do you wanna to go to and what sweet ride do you wanna take you there? So obviously you're gonna get building, and then what do you win? Well, like I said, a PlayStation 5 is up for grabs and $100 Amazon gift cards. So you wanna participate? Well, this is all run off of a server. So the server is currently open and it runs until April 1st, like I mentioned. You can join the Minecraft server at siennabuilds.minehut.gg. I also have a link in the description if you need help getting on and joining. And also you can learn about the rules and regulations. I'm super excited about this. Thanks for listening. And if you want any more updates, you can follow the Gen G Twitter account. Okay, we are back and with this list of tips, I have 10 of them for you. I'm just gonna assume that you've already sort of like had your first night and you're maybe up to like iron armor or something like that. Like you've already had your first night, you have a little starter base, you got a little bit of food, you got a little bit of armor and whatnot, uh, and now you're kind of wondering what to do next in your survival world. And also you want some tips to make sure that you don't fail miserably. And number one is that you should make some good farms early. Uh, for me, it was focused on food. I started off with a chicken farm to make sure that I had a lot of food. If uh, you don't want to make any redstone creation, just make sure that you have gathered cows and start breeding them or really pigs or any type of, you know, chicken, uh, any type of animal. And so good farms are food farms. Uh, I have an iron farm over here that is still broken as of this version of Minecraft. Uh, maybe in a very future video, we will be updating it. But iron farm, that's a fantastic first farm. And then the other farm that I would highly, highly suggest right at the beginning is a villager trading farm. That does take a little bit more work and a lot more effort. It does not have to look as nice as mine, even just taking over a village and keeping track of which villagers trade what. Uh, that is good enough because eventually you're going to want to use these villager traders for really a whole bunch of basic necessities in your game. Tip number two, that is to get Silk Touch, the enchantment on your pickaxe or on a shovel as fast as possible. I have it on both my pickaxe and my shovel right here. And if you have a villager trading farm, like what I mentioned in the first uh, thing, then you will hopefully be able to get a library villager that will trade you silk touch. Mine is just over here. Where, where, where is he? There we are. Silk touch. There he goes. Hi. 
I can buy my Silk Touch book for five emeralds. Silk Touch is just crazy, crazy useful. And a few of my tips coming up require Silk Touch in order to use. Uh, Silk Touch will allow you to pick up a block without changing its state. So if I was to pick up, say, this smooth stone, it will turn into cobblestone without silk touch. But if I pick it up with silk touch, then it will stay as this normal stone. Um, and that is useful for lots and lots and lots of reasons. It allows you to get blocks that you just cannot get without that enchantment. So get it as fast as possible. Tip number three. And this is a tip that uh, I need to practice what I preach because I don't do it often enough. And that is to always carry on your person an inner chest. Ender chests are fantastic. They're absolutely amazing. Uh, almost everybody knows about them, but just in case there's so the random one person who doesn't know, ender chests inventories are linked across dimensions, worlds, uh, whatever. So right here, you know, I have this ender chest that has a two elytra and everything in it. This ender chest, just a few steps away, exact same inventory. And uh, this will allow you to keep anything that is incredibly valuable safe because even if a creeper blows up an ender chest, the things inside of it are in the ender. I don't know where they're stored, but they're definitely not stored per chest. It is like just in the background. It's like, it's like storing your stuff to the cloud, okay? It's somewhere. It's out there. I don't know. So obviously it makes a lot of sense to store your valuables inside of an ender chest, but I don't store only my valuables. I also store a few essential items as well. So right here in this shulker box, I have uh, some fireworks and a ton of food. So I use fireworks a lot. Obviously food I use a lot. So both of those are pretty essential to what I do in my game. Also, I have some wood, so from wood I can make crafting tables. Uh, if I have you know, stone around, I can make torches and whatnot. Um, and I also have a compass in order to get back. Also some flint and steel. So I have a few things that are just essential to moving around. You may even wanna put torches in here. Um, you may want to put uh, some stone or iron, that sort of thing in here, diamonds in here that's valuable but also useful to you. And that way you will always have access to the uh, to all of this if you're just carrying one ender chest around with you. Uh, now, whenever you put down an ender chest, the only way to pick it up is with silk touch, which is one of the reasons I mentioned get silk touch as fast as you can. Because if you break an ender chest without silk touch, it just drops obsidian and that's no good. So you need silk touch. We are just zooming through these. We are on number four. And that is that Elytra is king. Uh, Elytra are the wings that are on my back that I am using to fly around. These things are so useful, especially if you are playing in a purely survival world. If you play on a server, they may have some modifications. They may have something going on where you can teleport from one spot to another. But in general, whenever you are in survival mode, you don't have any of those modifications. So getting Elytra to move from spot to spot is so helpful. You get Elytra uh, in the end dimension. Uh, so you have to go find that portal to head to the end. Uh, and then you could actually even skip fighting the Ender Dragon and just start blocking a thousand blocks away. And in the islands, you'll find in cities. And if you find floating boats, they will have Elytra inside of them. So getting from spot to spot, uh, it just makes it so much easier just to be able to quickly fly from one place to another. And this kind of goes back to my Ender Chest full of... <laughs> rockets because these rockets can propel you from one spot to another number five in the first episode of this series i did something and it was called a protection bucket now this is actually more of like a uh this is not a protection bucket this is an anti-protection bucket right now because it has lava inside of it but the idea is that when you are caving when you are out and about every once in a while something will happen to you and you might be caught on fire. <laughs> that happens more often than you would realize. So a bucket of protection is just a normal bucket with a little bit of water inside. Uh, this will allow you to save yourself if you accidentally fall into lava. This will allow you to put yourself out if a 
Uh, a skeleton hits you with a fire arrow or whatever. Ah, uh, no more rain. Also, a bucket of water is a fantastic way to head down long, long distances without taking fall damage. If you fall into water, it will stop the fall damage. So if you're at the top of a cliff and need to get down, pour some water, wait for it to flow for a little while, and then jump into it. And you can even go up things as well. So let's say you're at the bottom of a well or you're at the bottom of a big ravine and you need to head up that ravine. You can do the same thing kind of in reverse where you put some water down and, and then you can swim up it, pick it up and then move it up again. And you can continue this method to get to high places as well. It's like a it's like a poor man's ladder, basically. So a bucket of water is a fantastic thing to also always carry around with you. Number six, if you're gonna be using a world for a very, very long time and staying in survival without any cheats, well, I would suggest that you burn charcoal instead of coal. Charcoal is just burnt logs. So once you chop down a tree, smelt that up, you'll get charcoal as a result. Uh, and sometimes coal can be useful for other things, but if you're going for a long sustained world, because you can easily make more trees and break them down and, uh, you know, and, and chop them down, uh, charcoal is a renewable resource where coal is not. So use charcoal instead of coal when smelting things up. Number seven. I didn't really have this issue on this world, but I would suggest that you always know where your base is in relation to where you spawn in at, uh, when you first started the world. So, like I mentioned, I don't have this issue because my world spawn was this block right here. It's actually this whole area. Uh, it doesn't always happen to be on a, a single block, but that is where my world spawn is, and I decided to build my base right where I spawned in. But if you're not so lucky and you don't like where you spawned in and you go find a place to build a base, make sure you always know a pathway to get back. Otherwise, you could die, not have your bed set correctly, or maybe it gets blown up, or maybe just the game glitches out, and it won't be able to find any of your base, any of your stuff, because it can be uh, you know a long time since you started your world and you know when something messes up or you to send to send yourself all the way back to spawn. So make sure you always know how to get to your base or get to a landmark from your spawn point. A trail of torches is a fantastic method. A trail of uh, blocks, like maybe some cobblestone, that's a great method to know how to get from spawn to your base. But definitely make sure that you know how to get to at least a single landmark to know where you're going uh, from your world spawn. Number eight. This one is something that is going to come in handy after you've been in your world for a long time. And that is to nether hub it up, okay? Use a nether hub in order to get from place to place. In the nether, the blocks are compressed. So if you move one block in the nether, you move eight blocks in the overworld, which means that you can travel really, really far distances in the nether. Uh, you know, like let's say 100 blocks in the nether, well, that's 800 blocks in the overworld, and then these portals will link you to the overworld. And uh, so, and what I always do for my nether hubs is I like to build in this cross pattern. So this is zero of the world, or this would be zero, zero of the world right here. And we go off in every direction. And then you take the smallest, you know, you look at your coordinates whenever you're in the overworld and you take your smallest coordinate and you build towards one of these center portions and then you build towards the center. So you'll have these branching uh, pathways out of here and the longest pathway will always be one of these main roads. This is currently built at a Y level of 118. 118 is nice because you just don't run into as much lava. You have a lot of, you know, you have a lot more of this uh, uh, netherrack to deal with when you're building. If you wanted to, so this is 118, you know, 119, 120, or whatever, uh, you will always get some blocks up here, but you start running into bedrock is the issue so you have to decide do you want to run into bedrock and kind of work around that or do you want to um you know 
have have uh, a little bit every once in a while you'll run into these you know crevasses where you, you don't have uh, blocks underneath you uh, so Bill I like to build it up in the sky so you don't have to deal with quite so many uh, you know variations and changes and lava and that sort of thing and uh, then you can easily get to the nether or get to wherever you need to go number nine we're getting close to the end of our 10 tips and tricks and that is to keep track of points of destination so right here on this nether hub, I have my home in Snowy Taiga and Badlands. And to be honest, this is another one of those things that I need to practice more of what I preach. Uh, because I know that there are destinations that I have found that I am super excited that, I know, that I've that i used them before. And that they're fantastic places to go. Uh, like, specifically, I think the, the Ocean Monument. Like, I would love to go back to the Ocean Monument that I know that I cleared out. But... I don't remember where that is. I have no, I don't have coordinates. I don't have a location here in my nether hub. And that is something that I regret not having. And, and I don't know if I'm ever going to find it again. So I would suggest always keeping track of things that you have found with signs, with a map, or with a nether hub that has, you know, your signs and, and whatnot. And when I said signs before, I almost mean like a bulletin board of sorts where you can kind of say, you know, this is or like, this is my Trident farm. Trident farm is at such and such coordinates and then you'll be able to you know find that again it could even be a notepad document on your computer that has a list of coordinates whatever or you know what i also like to do is i like to show my coordinates and take a screenshot of whatever i'm looking at and then you know i know it's perfect because it's the image that has the coordinates in there and you can see whatever you know i'm looking at so you know what destination that is but keep track of those destinations as you move around in your world tip number 10 we've come to the last in our long list of tips and tricks and this one is a little bit cheesy but i really really wanted it in here and that is to tame some pets Make sure that you get some pets in your Minecraft world. I here have fish fox, which is the red fox right here, and frost fox, which is the white fox right here. And uh, I have a few other pets. I have some cats over there, and I have, you know, my bees, and I have a dog. I have a really bad dog. Um, but I just, I love the aspect of having a virtual pet. It also, sometimes it motivates me a little bit more to keep, you know, my whole base a little safer, where if, you know, if a creeper were to get in here and were to blow up fish fox and frost fox, I would be devastated. I mean, I would be absolutely devastated. So it's kind of fun to have that challenge of keeping my pets safe and sound and not losing them and keeping them in a spot that is going to be happy for them. So I uh, would definitely suggest if you are starting a survival Minecraft world to go and find some pets that you can keep safe and sort of, uh, you know, make sure, you know, you are their savior. You, you are their digital savior. So make sure that you keep them safe and uh, secure, which is, uh, I think, a lot of fun to do. Uh, that is it for my Tim 10 tips and tricks. If I was going to say a number 11, I would say uh, like and subscribe. <laughs> like the video and subscribe to the channel. Really, really thank you guys so much for watching. This is episode 65. I cannot believe we've gotten so far into this series. And I really, really appreciate all of y'all's support. So give a like on this video. Also, leave your comments down below. In fact, there was a comment that I really liked. It's from Banana Man that says you should make a Q&A episode where you answer questions. And I really like this. I'm not sure if I'm going to dedicate a whole video to it, but definitely leave your questions for me in the comments down below. Thanks so much for again for watching, and we'll see you in another video. Bye!